Louisiana Department of Health has declared an outbreak of hepatitis A statewide. Most of the recent cases reported in Morehouse Parish. Health officials have not identified a common source, but it appears to be spreading through direct person-to-person -person contact and use of illegal drugs. Some symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, diarrhea, and yellow. Health officials are urging eye. people to get vaccinated after a recent spike in hepatitis A cases. The Illinois Department of Public Health is reporting six new cases within the past week. There were two cases in suburban Cook County, three in East Central Illinois, and one in Central Illinois. 75 cases of hepatitis A have been confirmed statewide this year. That's just slightly above the yearly hepatitis average. Hepatitis A is 70. a serious highly contagious liver disease that the Department of Health says is now an epidemic in Louisiana. So some individuals would just have symptoms of some diarrhea, some nausea and vomiting. Uh, other individuals would progress down that spectrum of more fulminant liver failure and those individuals would end up in the ER. It's usually spread through food that's contaminated with infected feces, but this outbreak is different. It's being directly linked to the opioid crisis and IV drug use. It's especially among homeless populations. That's according to Dr. Alex B.U. with the Louisiana Office of Public Health. Louisiana tracks the hepatitis A levels year to year, uh, and really we've seen that the last year our numbers have nearly tripled. Did. A magnitude 2.2 earthquake shook things up in Central Mass today. Police in Templeton received a lot of calls from people reporting loud noises and some shaking in the area around Templeton and Gardner all around noontime. There were no reports of any Kentucky significant now damage. now leads the nation in confirmed hepatitis A cases, and the latest was found in an employee of a hotel restaurant off Newtown Pike. Michael Burke reports. Kevin Hall from the Lexington Fayette Health Department knows exactly why hepatitis A has reached epidemic levels across the state, most recently hitting a food service employee of the Clarion Hotel's Sports Page Bar and Grill. This is not going to go away until people get protected with the vaccination. It's community immunity. And the more people who are protected, the less likely it is to spread. And right now, Hall says the Lexington community is lagging. About that, that bright light in the sky from last night. Now, experts think it was a meteor, but the timing of it is what created such a dramatic image. And the big question is, could we see them again tonight? CBS 13's Rachel Wolf is live for us in downtown Sacramento. Rachel, you kind of can explain all this for us a little no bit better. No problem. I'm happy to do it. If you want to see it, look south towards Orion. It just depends on where you are. We are downtown on an overpass, so we're higher up, but there's so much cloud cover, you're really not going to see it here. You're going to have to go up above 5,000 feet to really see a show. No doubt the story has everybody talking. I just wanted to know what it was, so I asked my dad. I think it could have been a spaceship, maybe. I can't be a spaceship. I, I just saw it. A spaceship wouldn't have that much of power. Cesar Chavez fifth graders all had their own ideas about what lit up the sky Wednesday right around sunset. Did you think it was maybe like an extraterrestrial coming down? Um, I thought it was just a meteor. Experts say a meteor crashing into the Earth's atmosphere 60 to 70 miles up caused a noctilucent cloud. Which is basically a cloud that forms so high up, it's still lit up by the sun. So that was kind of my first thought, but it looked so close. Caitlin Everhart is an educator at Powerhouse Science Center in Sacramento. She showed us their meteor collection and explained meteors entering our atmosphere happens often, but the time of day made it more dramatic. Yeah, that trail of smoke was really, really uh, exciting. The sun would have blew it up. Walt Higus is president of the Sacramento Valley Astronomical Society. He estimates the meteor last night was the size of a baseball. He explained the phenomena we saw. Well, that's what happens when business you get news and consumer news this morning. Scott Peterson joining me. Scott, this is Ford announcing a major recall that affects F-150 trucks in Canada. We know how popular they are, so yeah. ears are perking up all over the place. What are we hearing from Ford? Yeah, and this has to do with a fire risk as far as a potential of fire damage on the block heater cable going into uh, uh, into the vehicle. Take a look at the amount that we're talking about because this is pretty astounding as far as it's close to half a million vehicles. 463,000 vehicles, and as you mentioned, these are some of Ford's most popular vehicles, the 150 and the Super Duty vehicle. And so assault and water invades this so-called 
so-called cable going into the block heater, it could corrode and start a fire. So uh, this involves the Ford uh, recall for select uh, 150s, F-150s between 2015 and 2019. Also affected here are the Super Duty vehicles between 2017 Meanwhile, and 2019. Meanwhile, in Mayaka City, a second EF-Zero tornado tore trees apart with 70 mile per hour winds there and caused some major flooding this morning. ABC Action News reporter Jake Peterson spoke to some people who say they feared for their lives. You never expect to be in something like this. Debbie Roden grabbed her granddaughter Faith and ran for cover inside their Mayaka City home this morning. We just had time to get in the bathroom. She says the strong winds only lasted two minutes, but when it passed. We're safe, but our yard and everything out here, 15 acres, is devastated. Beautiful trees, everything is just torn right out of the ground. Tree branches thrown onto the house, furniture tossed around, and the roads flooded. The impassable roads making it even more difficult for people to get to the breaking news tonight from Southeast Connecticut. Crews are on the scene right now of a fire at an apartment complex on Branford Avenue in Groton. Channel 3's Matthew Campbell is live there right now with what he's learned. Matthew. Well, Aaron and Mark, this is not just an active scene. It is also a tense one here as well. You're looking alive right now as firefighters are putting out some of the hot spots on the homes here on Branford Ave here in Groton. Now, the reason it's still a tense time is because we just spoke with the chief here who says he is unsure if everyone made it out okay. Now, this fire started around 9 tonight, and you can see the heavy response it triggered. We have multiple departments on scene here. Now, when we arrived, we saw heavy smoke pouring out of buildings 37 with the worst of it coming out of the homes closest to the street now that attack Clydesdales stuck in uh, pits next to a house we rescued a cow out of a, a swimming pool one time it's uh you know out here in the county it you, you never know what you're going to run into Battalion Chief Stephen Hardesty says animal rescues are nothing new to him and his team, but this one was certainly unique. Sunday morning, a call came in to 911 that this pet llama was stuck in the rising waters of the Patuxent River off Mink Hollow Road. Chief Hardesty says in situations involving pets, their jobs become even more important because multiple lives can be at stake. If we don't take the risk, then the homeowner or the, the neighbor or whatever would have tried to go out and affect the same rescue. and you know, ultimately, far too often, we end up having right, to go back. We seem to keep them. saying this, but there's a new reason tonight to check your credit card statements. Brugger's Bagels say some of its customers' credit card information was exposed after a data breach. The company has more than a dozen locations right here in the Pittsburgh area. Amy Wattis has more on when this happened. The president of Brugger's Bagels sent a letter to customers warning them of this data breach. In the letter, the president warns customers that if they visited any of the company-owned locations between August and December, there's a possibility that their name and credit card information may have been accessed as a result of unauthorized activity. Among those locations, 13 in the Pittsburgh area. At the end of November, Brugger's Bagels identified identified unusual activity on its network through its information security Combined monitoring process. high processes. winds caused damage really across the area. Outside the city, the gusting blasted through knocking down trees and bringing traffic to a stop. WBZ's Christina Rex is in Boston where there was some damage to buildings. This section of Boylston Street is still closed down and will be for a while. This situation didn't just affect traffic, but because of the danger, shut down the sidewalks and local businesses, too. Not one, but two pieces of the Van Ness building fell on Boylston Street Friday afternoon. The first on a car. The second on a balcony. Right now, more than 190,000 homes and businesses in British Columbia are without power. Still in the dark after a powerful windstorm hammered the southern half of the province. That is the landmark pier in White Rock, just south of Vancouver. The century-old structure smashed in half by wind-driven waves, leaving a man trapped and essentially afloat on the debris. Search and rescue crews had to airlift him to safety. We have more on that story in just a moment, but first more wild scenes from the height of the storm. Now this is the Victoria area on Vancouver Island. Winds peaking 
at 100 kilometers an hour, blasting trees and knocking down power lines. Officials say a falling tree killed a man in Duncan, just north of Victoria, and this is a rescue from there, a houseboat adrift after being torn from its moorings. The top suite is uh, damaged quite a bit on the inside, mainly drywall. I saw the first one get down, and that one down, immediately think, thought of the... Uh, this is the a look at the damage in Vancouver. Rows of big trees are down on some streets. Communities on BC's south coast took hard hits as well. BC Hydro warning that some homes and businesses may not get their power back for days. So here are the latest numbers from BC Hydro's website. More than 81,000 homes and businesses without power in the Vancouver area and on the Sunshine Coast. On Vancouver Island, more than 47,000 are blacked out in the Nanaimo area and communities to the north. Another 57,000 are in the dark in the Victoria area and towns in the southern half of the island. Again, BC Hydro warning the power may not be back in some places for days. Here is Tina Lovegreen with more, including another look at that rescue in White Rock. Howling wind, pounding waves. Boats smashed into each other and tore away from the dock. We saw that there was a group of about 12 sailboats that had come loose and they were traveling together in like a tied up clump of boats. And those loose boats shattered a landmark that has stood for a century. Tim Shields and several others were standing on the White Rock Pier when it began to crumble under them. And we had quite a dramatic run to safety to crawl up and over these masts with all of the guy wires and cables and the, the pier was heaving up and down, it was coming apart almost under. Holding the powerful accountable and getting results. Shut the camera there. Eight on your side, Steve Andrews investigates. An assistant Pasco County principal pleads guilty to perversion. He admits to producing, distributing and possessing child pornography. His actions stunned his colleagues at the Pasco County School District. 36-year-old Kyle Ritzema a cop to plea in federal court, admitting he shot sexually explicit pictures of, then had sex with, a 14-year-old boy. Get on your side, senior investigative reporter Steve Andrews tells us now this former assistant principal is going away for a long time. Yeah, you know, a mandatory minimum 15 years on one charge. He could get up to 80. Some call this former assistant principal a wolf in sheep's clothing. Wearing a Pinellas County Jail orange jumpsuit, 36-year-old Kyle Ritzema admitted to the dark side of his life. He's very remorseful for what he did. Uh, he's never harmed any students. In federal court, he pleaded guilty to four counts of producing, distributing, and possession of child operation is happening right now to get homeless people off the street in Orange County this morning. The city of Anaheim is clearing an encampment out of a popular park. And that's where CBS 2's Candace Crone joins us live with the details. Good morning, Candace. Good morning, Peter and Crystal. Yeah, this park has been a tent city for quite some time. This morning, the homeless are being bused to a shelter about five miles away. Now, at this point, there's only about 10 or 15 people left here at the park. Now, they're not being forced to go, uh, but they must leave the park. Let's go now to some video of the shelter, which is located at South State College Boulevard near Angel Stadium. The 200-bed facility will have cots, showers, restrooms, and washers and dryers. Now, this is partly in response to an increase in the number of tents that have been popping up in the park, as well as complaints from neighbors. A city leader say that the temporary housing is vital as we get into a colder, rainier winter season because it can be especially dangerous time for people sleeping outside. Joining me now is Mike Lister with the city. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about what's happening today and just kind of how this all came about. Sure. So we have an incredible today. team. Of they are going tent by tent and working with people on an individual basis to basically transition them out of living on a sidewalk and to this incredible shelter that we just opened on Thursday and I have spent so much time there myself and I can tell you that for somebody coming from a situation like this we've made it as close to home as possible to make it very easy humane compassionate first at noon, and an safe. extremely rare and contagious virus forced all their elementary school in southeast Portland to close for the day the district says an adult with hepatitis A was recently in the school building. Fox 12's Tyler Dumont is at Alder Elementary with what's being done to stop the disease from spreading. 
Professional cleaners have been here since early this morning. The district tells us they were talking with the health department today, but we still don't know if the person infected is a teacher, staffer, or parent, and if anyone else may be at risk. On a morning that's usually bustling with buses and chaotic with kids, signs outside Alder Elementary said classes were canceled. I can't play with my friends, there's no school, so I feel very sad. But at least he's not feeling sick. The Reynolds School District says the building is closed for the day because an adult who was inside recently contracted hepatitis A, a highly contagious liver infection that can be spread through close contact if a person is not vaccinated. It has a long incubation period of two to seven weeks. Among the many symptoms, fatigue, abdominal pain, nausea, and vomiting. In an email sent to parents, the district said, quote, we are taking every precaution to clean the entire building building and will be closed we to complete this process right now in Pasco County a mobile home park in Zephyr Hills was dealt a big blow when a straight line wind moved through news channel East Ryan Hughes is there live and Ryan some pretty bad damage for those folks good evening to you around 70 homes damaged by those strong winds and surprisingly many of the homeowners here taking it in stride Joseph Mazzullo's dog first realized something bad was brewing. I was sitting on my computer, and all of a sudden the dog was whining a little, and that usually means that something's wrong. Then he realized it wasn't good. The house started shaking. It, I, I was just telling him it sounded like a freight train. Wow. This whole side of the house was shaking. And I wouldn't even look out the window. <laughs> when he did, this is what he saw in the backyard. His neighbor's roof torn off, twisted, and tossed to the ground. That man, Lauren Lemon, unhurt but a little shaken by a really close call. NTSB investigators throughout the day supervised the recovery of the four bodies. And the NTSB supervised the salvage crews who recovered the cockpit voice recorder and meticulously removed the plane wreckage from the scene, cataloging every part and preparing it all for reassembly and analysis. The Cessna jet came down Thursday in this football field in English Park in northwest Atlanta, along busy Fulton Industrial Boulevard, crashing moments after taking off from Fulton County Airport a mile and a half away. It was on its way to the Memphis area. The plane's owner on board, Wei Chen, a celebrated and experienced pilot and the founder and CEO of Sunshine Enterprises based in Memphis with offices through a building that housed the monsoon forest habitat yesterday as visitors were evacuated. Thick plumes of black smoke billowed into the sky as the blaze spread through the zoo that houses 21,000 animals. Inside the affected enclosure was believed to be Sumatran orangutans, Sulawesi macaques and the Sundagarial crocodile as well as a number of rare birds. Staff desperately tried to save all the animals and managed to rescue many that would have otherwise been trapped. But this morning it has announced that some animals couldn't be saved and tragically died in the fire. We are devastated to say we were unable to save some animals, Chester Zoo Chief Operating Officer Jamie Criston and a statement the Zoo's Chief Operating Officer Jamie Criston said, Yesterday was one of the toughest days in Chester Zoo's long history. The remarkable efforts from the zoo team and the emergency services meant the fire was extinguished as quickly as possible. Visitors were evacuated immediately and we would like to thank them for their understanding and cooperation. over the course of the day, Aristea, when I woke up. We were at about $3 million raised for this border wall. Right now, as it stands, more than $10 million raised by people across the country. When you look at the donations, we're talking 80 bucks, 10 bucks, 50 bucks, $100. And if you go to the largest amounts, 
50 grand, the biggest donation, $12,000, $10,000, the list goes on. This site turning an already controversial topic and amplifying it. With the showdown in Washington over funding President Trump's border wall, Americans across the country decided to take matters into their own hands. Three days ago, a triple amputee veteran created a GoFundMe to fund the wall. This is America coming together. They want the wall, and they're putting their money where their mouth is, and they're funding it. It's now raised more than $9.5 million. Uh, the idea I think it's unnecessary not as well received I think it's silly in downtown Denver there's better ways to manage the influx of people coming in and out of the country and a wall is not going to do that I think that we could probably probably use that money and put it somewhere else opponents think the money could be better spent helping the homeless or you know funding what, education guys, people are worried about the birds and they're also worried about kids there's a playground right over there what if children had swallowed these pills it was so bad Witnesses say some of the birds couldn't fly. We have pictures and video of them. A Canada goose passed out flat on its back, feet straight up in the air. This is my buddy right here. And Huntington Beach's Brian McDaniel rescued another intoxicated bird in his neighborhood a couple miles away. Bad symptoms, like something was wrong with it. Its head and neck were lolling all over the place. The eyes, one was open, the other one was closed. And then it, it, it started flapping its wings, and I thought it was dying. It turns out that someone dumped a few hundred pills on the banks of Car Park Monday, which is filled with waterfowl, the wildlife gobbled them up. I don't know if it was, um, if it was kids playing a prank or somebody just littered these pills and she said they were heart pills, anxiety pills, antidepressants, and it just looked like confetti She's a beautiful all over person. the ground. She has a fighting spirit. Anna Norquist is in the battle of her life. The 30-year-old former gymnast remains in the intensive care unit at IU Health Methodist Hospital in Indianapolis. That after contracting toxic shock syndrome. None of the doctors expected her to survive. And she is, remarkably. Anna began feeling sick at the beginning of the month, and after only a few days, her symptoms rapidly got worse. She uh, was in Chicago on a Friday, went to a concert, thought she was getting, you know, flu-like symptoms. Uh, then by Monday, she was fighting for her life. Doctors believe Anna's infection may have been caused by streptococcus, the same bacteria that causes strep throat. They don't know and probably never will know actually entered. They think it was the right arm and that's why they took it first. The former gymnast has had 10 surgeries, including her right arm and left leg amputated. Doctors warn her family there is more. The right foot will follow shortly behind that and then uh, ultimately her left arm. Each surgery posing a risk to Anna's life, but each time she survives a procedure, her family is reminded of her strength. Anna's a very dynamic personality. She's very strong. This is going to be well, a shock. The controversy surrounding Hershey Kisses fans are upset. They say the tips of the chocolate are broken or jagger, jagged. Uh, bakers say this ruins the look of many holiday treats. Hershey heard the complaints. They say they are looking at a real the mess problem. out here, and crews are still working to clean up the mess that was caused when that 24 inch cast iron water main broke this morning. This pipe was installed back in 1922, and as you can see, there is a huge hole where all of this damage originated. Water rushed along 55th Street, making the South L.A. road look more like a river. Like thunder, louder than gunshots. Charles Freda heard the loud rumble as the ground opened up. I saw like a whole opening and then it just started sinking. Our camera was rolling when this white Nissan pickup truck floated down the driveway and began to sink in the large hole. At least two would end up there. Wake up, there's water in the house. Fabian Velasquez was visiting his family home on his winter college break. The water moved, poured in and it flooded it. It flooded the whole um, area around my house. About 7:20, uh, the Los Angeles Fire Department received multiple 911 calls concerning a, a sinkhole with vehicles going into it and possibly people trapped. He says one person nearly fell in the hole; another was struggling to get out of the water. Firefighters actually had to help many of the neighbors escape the rushing water. How severe? Very severe. Neighbors tell us they first saw a problem three days ago. On Tuesday, it was reported to us it was a water service leak. And then early this morning, the water main broke, so two unrelated incidents. It looks pretty bad. It smells a lot of gas. The gas company says one of the sinking cars hit and ruptured the gas line. It had to be pinched and later ravaged. Repaired.
by the lack of action on the part of our government and local government, state government, who just turned their backs on them. What are we talking about? Visalia, California. It sits between L.A. and San Francisco. And in that town, over the course of two harrowing days earlier this week, Gustavo Garcia, he's a man twice removed from this country, went on what authorities call a reign of terror. It's a 24-hour shooting spree killing at least two and injuring... Deputies taking gunfire from this man, 36-year-old Gustavo Garcia. It all went down on Road 140 and Avenue 256 early Monday morning. You can hear the officer reloading his gun as bullets ring out. Now, while the circumstances of this are, are, are tragic on their own, the run-up to it is even more so. Two days before this reign of terror, he was arrested by the Tular County Sheriff's deputies for being under the influence of a controlled substance. He was held in the county jail for about 10 hours before being released, even though ICE officials had issued an immigration... Flooding that hasn't been seen since Hurricane Florence is creeping back in the Carolinas. The Lumber River is forecasted to climb back into major flood stage by the end of the weekend around Lumberton. How do you get in and out? I don't. I stay there. I have to yell from the road to Diane Jones, who just celebrated her 81st birthday, but who won't be able to leave and celebrate anytime soon. So you are stuck at home? Yes, with, with a wheelchair and a cane. Snowmelt from the storm that hit western North Carolina last weekend is playing a big part in this. But rain forecasted for this weekend is expected to cause even more problems like closing down roads, and isolating and even inundating. Alert in North Some Miami home. Beach, health officials in Miami-Dade County lifted the alert. The areas affected were Northeast 186th Street to the north, Royal Glades Canal to the south, West 60 Highway to the east, and Northeast 19th Avenue to the west. The alert went into effect back in October after a second cat tested positive. You need to pay attention, to, pay attention to if you have a new water heater in your home. Some of the Navian tankless water heaters and boilers may produce excessive amounts of carbon monoxide. The recalled heaters were made between July and October of this year. We have more information on our website, cbsboston.com. This. The National Weather Service has confirmed three tornadoes to our north. One of those hit Mayaka City in Manatee County. A woman says she heard it touch down and she immediately went to hide with her granddaughter. We just had time to get in the bathroom. But our yard and everything out here, 15 acres, is devastated. Beautiful trees, everything is just torn right out of the ground. Well, heavy rains in the area also caused issues for people as they tried to get back and see the damage after the severe weather went through. The National Weather Service has also confirmed an EF0 tornado touchdown in Lake Wales. This happened around 9.15 yesterday morning and damaged a woman's home. She's 90 years old and she was injured after part of a roof fell and hit her on the head. She went to the hospital but is expected to be okay. This is Dabu 7 with an earthquake update. As you can see here on the global incident map, on the other side of this ridge from Alaska, there has been a pretty strong earthquake, a 7.3, striking Russia in this region, and it's been followed by a series of 5.6, five, 5.5 5 magnitude quakes. And we can see here, since that quake, we've had a series of mid-level quakes popping up along this line toward Anchorage. We can also see Montana 
Utah, Nevada, all having mid-level quakes striking in that area as well. And we can see here, New Madrid saying, hey, a little bit of activity Former going President on Caltrans there. Today installed the brand new signs of President Barack H. Obama Highway. That's uh, renaming the portion of the 134 after our 44th president. Here's a picture of the sign, which is in Glendale. The stretch now named after Mr. Obama runs between the two freeways. A fire and spread through this furniture warehouse in South El Monte. The fire broke out just after midnight, and you can see those flames quickly spread through the building, sending smoke high into the air. No one was inside. Investigators are trying to figure out what exactly. And windy day all across South Florida as whipping winds cause all kinds of trouble in parts of South Florida. CBS 4's Amber Diaz is live tonight in Brickell where there was flying construction debris. And Amber, was anyone hurt out there today? No, fortunately, Ruta Bay, but there was a close call. We're told a man was sitting in his car right behind me. This is the flat iron building that's under construction when a window pane fell and came smashing down onto his window. A man walks away unscathed. He was inside his car when a window pane from the Flatiron Building in Brickell came crashing down. The building is under construction. The palm trees is one thing, but man, things falling out of the, out of the building, that's crazy. Miami-Dade Transit temporarily suspended Metro Mover operations when more debris fell onto their tracks. They write, Metro Mover Brickell Loop Service has been temporarily suspended due to debris that has fallen onto the guideway from nearby construction. Our team is working to clear the guideway and ensure conditions are safe before resuming service. I'm trying to get the Metro Mover home. I've been working all day. The winds proving so strong Friday afternoon, nearly taking people down. I'm not even from here, but this this is strong and like knocked me off a little bit earlier. I felt that a little bit walking over here it was pushing well, me a little bit. this morning for the Palms community near Culver City. Yeah, someone called in a threat at a religious temple. Now LAPD officers are on scene. CBS 2's Cara Finstrom is live with the latest for us. Cara. Good morning, Crystal. The LAPD says a man called police this morning saying he was inside the Hare Krishna Cultural Center and had guns and bombs. Just behind us here, you can see all of the streets surrounding that center still sealed off as police try to determine if this is a credible threat. They say it does not appear anyone was inside the temple and they do not believe any hostages were taken. Right now, they're trying to determine if the man who made the threat was ever inside or could still be there. Now, this has been the scene for more than four hours about 30 people have been evacuated from nearby homes and businesses as a precaution. An LAPD spokesperson tells us the call came in around 7 this morning to one of the LAPD's non-emergency lines, and the man threatened to harm the community. Police immediately began trying to communicate again with him, but have been unable to call him back. They say they don't want to take any chances. At the same time, LAPD Detective Megan Aguilar told us law enforcement has had to deal Water. with many hoaxes. One after another. Happened yesterday morning in East Austin Colony neighborhood, and now people who've been affected are asking their water company for an explanation. KXA's Tom Miller found out the company was doing maintenance at the time, but it is not accepting responsibility. When Lynn Loxy got home Tuesday, this is what she walked into water seeping into her Austin's Colony home. Now the fans are in and carpet gone. It's covering up the front yard instead. There was about an inch of water in here, maybe maybe two. The Loxie family isn't alone. Oh, this Cell phone video taken from a home down the road shows a similar scene. While this was happening, a wet spot started to appear on nearby Castleman Drive. Ashley Trimpey noticed it just as her water saw. President Trump's recommendations to change the food stamp program. The president said today he's going to try to change the rules through executive order, and that has some people upset. John Delano has the story. The Trump administration is considering tightening work requirements for Americans on food stamps that could eliminate 750,000 Americans from the Supplemental Nutritional Assistance Program, or SNAP. It had become a way of life for many able-bodied working adults without dependents who had just relied on uh, food stamps without looking for a job. Agricultural Secretary Sonny Perdue says with unemployment so low, able-bodied Americans should be working. We have an economy with 3.7% uh, unemployment, more jobs than people. We need American workers and we want to restore the dignity of work for the American worker. 
But Ken Regal with Just Harvest, a local social service nonprofit agency, says there already is a work requirement for able-bodied that We should not be surprised by his decision to withdraw some 2,000 U.S. troops from Syria. The president claims that they have defeated ISIS there and other countries need to step up. But his announcement yesterday was condemned by many of his Republican supporters. David Martin is at the Pentagon where officials are making plans for the withdrawal. David, good morning. Good morning. The president's decision is drawing criticism from members of his own party and from within his own administration. One senior administration official tells CBS News it's a catastrophic disaster. But one voice of approval came from a Russian foreign ministry spokesman who said it creates real prospects for a political solution President to Syria's Trump civil Trump and war. yesterday with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. The American administration told me that it was the president's intention to withdraw their forces from Syria. They made clear that they had other ways to express their influence in the region. This is, of course, an American decision. We will learn its schedule, its mode of operation, and of course the implications for us. In any event, we will make sure to maintain Israel's security and protect ourselves in this region. And Dan, what kind of consequences, what are the implications of the U.S. pullout from Syria? Well, the decision has uh, very grave consequences, consequences, I'm afraid. Uh, this is a Christmas gift for the Iranians, for Hezbollah, for the Assad regime, for the Russians, and it puts Israel in a very President difficult Vladimir situation. Putin is welcoming that plan to remove U.S. troops from Syria. Putin is holding his famously long end-of-year news conference in Moscow this morning. He's taking questions from hundreds of Russian and foreign journalists. Our Charlie Daggett is there and joins us from Moscow. Charlie, good morning. Good morning. Well, it's been another marathon press conference on subjects ranging from the situation in Ukraine to why President Putin isn't married yet. Now, on the topic of U.S. troop withdrawal from Syria, the president called the American presence there illegitimate in the first place. As for defeating ISIS, I do generally agree with the President of the United States. We've achieved some major advances when it comes to defeating the terrorists, and we have struck major blows on terrorists in Syria. Whether do we need the presence of the American military, I guess we do not need that presence. The presence of your troops is illegitimate, so if you've made this decision, it is the right decision. President Putin also warned about the rise in the threat of a nuclear war, saying if the United States puts intermediate missiles in Europe, Russia will be forced to take countermeasures.